today is climbing day. We will go to one of the biggest and most extraordinary climbing gyms in Shanghai. Yeah. Let me check for so one. Today is climbing day. Yeah. So it's a pretty wide angle, yeah. right? Yeah. I've never carried my climbing gear and the camera gear before. This is not good. It's, there, there are two activities that are not that compatible, a lot of weight. We're going to Climbing Factory, the biggest climbing gym in Shanghai that I know of and probably in China. I'm gonna show you how it is. All right, but before any climbing, you need to fill yourself up with caffeine. This is a proper climbing gym. everything here from bouldering to top roping and also lead climb behind me you have the speed wall this is by far the best gym I've seen in Shanghai the problems are so engaging they have they actually have a V9 I think somewhere here That's the first time I've seen a V9 in Shanghai, in the gym. Victor is solving his problem. You see, Victor solving a problem, come on. Yeah, it's a challenge. No, don't, don't feel it. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can see why I think this is the proper gym, right? You have the slab climbing, practicing here, a massive amount of, of lead climb with auto belay and, and top rope belay, a massive wall for lead climb, and then a gigantic area for uh, bouldering with really nice overhang. Then up here, you also have a great practice area with your um, with your moonboard, with your um, campus board, and it's still in the construction part of it. Down there, next to where Victor is, you have the the speed wall. So this is a pretty pretty sweet gym. It's by far one of the best best gyms I've ever seen. Uh, well, especially because I've only climbed, climbed in Shanghai indoors. So for me, this is ah, the best space ever. And up here, we have a few changing rooms in the back with some lockers down there. I'm gonna leave my bag because I have all this equipment. And, and here, the dining area. So you can order some food, stay here for the whole day, practice a little bit and, and have some snacks along the way. It's perfect. It was a really good session. I love this gym. Uh, we did some bouldering. We did some uh, top rope. It's now almost three hours since we got here. You 
see some amazing climbers in this gym. Okay, it's now time to go home. Oh, I'll take a rest. It's been a week and a half since I last climbed. Later that same evening. How did I end up with three pairs of black diamond shoes? So there are a few videos out there about choosing your climbing shoe and it's fairly complicated if you don't have access to a lot of shoes. The Momentum is identified as a good beginner climbing shoe because it's uh, fairly affordable, it's, it's, it has a good price and is really good material and really good quality. My street shoe size is number 41 and I decided to order number 43 Europe, number 10 US. I noticed immediately that the shoe was baggy. I can put the shoe on without much effort. So there are a lot of roots and, and problems that I can't, I simply can't do because the shoe is too big. The shoe bends backwards because my foot is not filling up the shoe. And I realized that it is kind of delaying my progress and I decided to buy a new shoe. So I decided to go to the Shadow. And it's, it's a really nicely designed shoe. It's all black. It has a, an, amazing, an amazing cover for your toe hooks. The lines align with the pattern. As soon as they arrived, took a couple of plastic bags, I went straight to the gym. It was one of the most painful experiences ever. It was so painful to put my foot into the shoe that it took me about five minutes in the process. And by the end of it, I was sweating. I was sweating through all my pores. I couldn't climb, I couldn't even walk. So when I arrived home, I decided I'm gonna buy the zone. So let's recap. I, I bought Momentum number 43 and it's far too large. I bought Shadow number 41, which is actually my street shoe size, and it's extremely, extremely tight. And I decided to buy the Zone number 42. When I tried them on, yes, they are tight, but I can feel wiggle room. If there's some adjustment, I will have a baggy shoe within one month. And after a bunch of videos, I actually found one from Epic TV Climbing Daily. And in that video, Annie from Dab Rats mentions that the shoes she's using now, she actually couldn't even walk in them. She had to break them in. She would wear them in bed for a few minutes at a time, sweating. And that's exactly what happened with me. I researched a little bit more. I saw some tricks on how you should fill up a plastic bag with water, a Ziploc bag with water, fill your shoe with it and put it in the freezer overnight. The water expands, adjusts into the shoe, breaks it down a little bit. After one night in the freezer, they actually adjust it. And with the piece of plastic, I am able to squeeze them in a little easier. I can already put weight on my toes, something that I couldn't do before. All of this to say, actually, I think Black Diamond is right. You should buy the shoe according to your street shoe size. I can't wait to, to start using them. Hopefully, they will allow me to climb a little better. Um, sorry if the video was too long, but if there's a lesson to be learned is if you're buying a black diamond shoe, buy your own shoe size. It's going to be extremely painful in the beginning. Try to break them down before you start using them on the roots. I'll keep you updated in a couple of months to see how did they perform and if I actually did improve my kilter board training or not. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.